Hi, so this video is, that is my cat scratching on a furniture. Could you please stop? Please stop! Thank you. <laughs> uh, the title of this video is uh, what to do when you find a stray animal or what to do when you find a stray animal at your door or you find a stray animal outside your door. When an animal is outside your door in or in the vicinity of where you are and it looks like it needs help, it's probably, think of yourself. If you were stuck outside in the elements and it was late winter, late winter northern hemisphere and uh, you'd been stuck outside and you were just barely surviving and you were just desperate for some kind of help and you went to someone's door and you knocked or you called what what three things would help you the most yeah rough. what three things would help you the most well in an animal's case top three things first thing water they're really usually really thirsty and the, the best thing you could probably do is fill a container, a small plastic container. It doesn't have to be plastic, could be anything, as long as you're happy to lose it. Because once you put out it outside, how do you know it's going to be there the next day? Basically, choose something that you're happy to lose. It could even be um, the last takeout order that you had, a container from that, and, and you just fill it with water. The thing is, um, being outside, animals don't always have a, especially in cities and, and the living areas where we are, the, the water outside is not always the cleanest. It's not always the best for them to drink. They could all, all get sick. So just by filling up a bowl of clean water and putting it outside your door, you are, you are saving them. You are, I mean, think about yourself. Like if you were stuck out for, for days and days and days on end, it's not easy to find water and food for free, right? So water is the biggest thing. And also in winter, what often happens is the available water that is out there, either in puddles or um, either in puddles or just around, like in, in buckets or things where rain collects, in wintertime, it freezes up. It all freezes up. So even if someone was putting out uh, regular water for for stray animals out there it's going to freeze in winter so probably after three days an animal would come there and find that it's oh it's now impossible to drink it because there's just a block of ice there so actually even i mean this doesn't take any money from you all it takes is well, just empty out the container that's got the ice block in it and refill it with clean water so that the animals in the area can at least have clean water to drink that's one of the biggest things yeah um i'm just gonna say just just about the water thing please know that i think a lot of people are really afraid that one if they do this the one time they're going to have animals all around their place all the time and they're never going to be able to clear them like a like a pack of dogs i'm going to tell you this for a fact this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. If you have water there, animals do come and drink it. They do come and drink it. They're, they're really grateful. They're, they drink it and then they leave. They don't stay. They don't stay. And usually they move on and do other things. And um, in my, in my uh, experience, cats are especially like this. They don't stick around long. If they have come to you in distress or uh, in some way need of help, they almost always need it at that time. It does not mean it's forever. It definitely doesn't mean it's forever. They just need a bit of help at that time. Maybe they need food or water or something or maybe medical help. And usually if they've been growing, um, if they've grown up or have been raised outside in the wild or just out there, they're used to that. That's, that's their home. So if they've come to you, it's been because they've sensed that you can help them with uh, one, two, maybe three particular things. They're not going to necessarily depend on you forever. So you don't always have to worry about this. I mean, uh, sometimes people do decide to keep them on and foster them for longer. Generally, with cats, in my in my experience, they've stayed for a while um, until you know needs are met, 
and then they've vacated the premises. This has happened with at least two, three cats that I've taken in to help. I helped them out with what they needed, and then after a while they just left. Like, cheers, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy for that. Thank you. The, the second number thing is a bit of food. Same thing with the water. A container with just some dry food in it, even if it's just leftovers from your fridge. There's often, we don't always finish the, the takeout order that we finish. You could do that. Um, yeah, you could put it in a plastic container or a, just anything. You, even putting it, putting the food out on um, a paper bag or so, a piece of paper would work as well. Um, because often out there, you know, the food that they have access to is often not clean and, you know, who knows. Um, and maybe it's really hard to come by. And uh, especially in winter time, that can't be very easy for them at all. So a little bit of food. It doesn't, again, just because you leave food out the first time doesn't mean they're going to keep coming, coming back, coming back. Maybe if you have uh, resident cats in that, in that neighborhood, yes, they will. But if it's a once-off and you had the animal come to you and it looks like it's really in dire straits, it's there for a reason. It doesn't want to take advantage. And number three that you can do, hi Rick, hello sweetheart. Um, number three that you can do is you can get a cardboard box near your door um, and you can fill it with um, an old blanket so that they've got some kind of uh, shelter from the wind, shelter from the cold. And you can just leave this outside your door or anywhere outside your place. Um, I'm giving you these tips because I'm assuming that um, a lot of people already have pets inside their own house. And this is why you can't, you feel like you can't take them in because you'd upset the dynamic with your own existing pets. And uh, yeah, you basically can't take that new animal in. But there are things that you can do to help that creature to get it its needs met until it's okay to go off and, it's, and find its own way again. Because that's very frequently all they need. They just need, they're either in dire straits for, they're thirsty, they're really thirsty, or, you know, often, you know what? Often that's it. They're just thirsty. Um, because for food, they can often hunt and find their own food. This is cats that I'm talking about. Dogs, I'm not sure, but uh, cats are very self-efficient, self-sufficient. Um, but it definitely helps if if you can give them a bit of food too. And generally, in, in my experience, they have not stayed long. And then, of course, number four, number four, medical help, if that's all right with you. If you're worried about touching the animal, if you're really worried about touching the animal, you could put some gloves on your hands, put the, the cat inside a towel and, um, or the animal inside a towel or if you do have an enclosure that's great if you're you're not used to animals at all a cardboard box with work and then you tape up the cardboard box and then you can take it to the vet and get it checked out if it needs any medical treatment medical treatment for big things is quite expensive yes but very frequently maybe it's just um flea infestation Maybe it's just um, a wound that needs clearing. Yeah. All the best. Uh, yes, again, know that they probably don't want to stay forever. They just need help at that time. Yes. 